church, let's all stand together. It's a beautiful day to worship our God. Any day is a good day to worship. Hear the call from Psalm 57. Our hearts are steadfast, O God, and our hearts are steadfast. We will sing and make music. Awake, O soul. Awake, heart, harp, and lyre. And we will awaken the dawn. We will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and we will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. So God, we come before you today on this beautiful Sunday, declaring that you alone are God. Our desire is to worship you in spirit and in truth today and every day. May your grace be upon us right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
shall still redeem Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow And sin had left a crimson stain
my songs of deliverance. We've been liberated from our bondage. We're the sons and the daughters. Let our sing our freedom. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. been so so kind to me before I spoke before I spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so
was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. And I felt no
I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. And yet you still give yourself away. So Lord, I thank you, God, for this overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. The love that has no boundaries and limits. So Lord, I thank you, God, for your fierce and reckless love. First John 3, verse 1 to 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now that we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him. For we shall be, shall, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. So yes, Lord, I just thank you for your unconditional love, God, for your abundant love. God, it was you, God, who loved us first, Jesus. God, it was you who chased us down and fought for us, God, until we are found. God, it was you, God, who paid the king ransom so that we may have life, life abundantly. And so, Lord, I, I pray, God, that you help us, God, to be more like you, God, in this season, Jesus. That may you increase and we will decrease. Help us, God, to have the, the right perspective of you, God, in the midst of our trials and tribulations and circumstances. Because we know that, God, the testing of our faith, God, will produce perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. And we know that hope does not disappoint. And so, Lord, help us, God, to have the right perspective of you, Jesus, in every season of our life. God, also pray to God that you would help us as well, God, to follow you, Jesus. God, to follow you as our shepherd. God, to be quick to, uh, to, to listen to your heart, God, and slow to speak. So, Lord, help us, Jesus, God, not to always uh, try to run ahead of you, God, but always wait on you, Jesus, to always follow you. And help us as well, Jesus, God, more than anything, to love, to love like the way that you love, Jesus. God, to be quick to love our brother and sister. God, to, to be quick to listen, God, and not to, to try to, to speak or to fix them, Jesus but to meet them where they at, Jesus. Just like how you have met us where we are. So Lord, help us, God, to love, to love like the way that you love. Lord, I also pray, God, for those that need a healing as well. For Rana, God, we still remember her. And also for those that are struggling, God, with mental illness, God, mental health. And also for those who are sick and ill, God, or have any infirmities, God, we just pray for healing and restoration, God, over their bodies. And Lord, um, we also pray for our service today, Jesus, for Pastor Q, that you would just use him, God, to deliver your word, God. May your word would strengthen us, empower us, God, so that we can be an effective witness in our community. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, welcome Hope Church. Take this time to say hello, look around and say hi to those who are sitting around you. Hello folks, welcome. Hi, welcome to anyone who's visiting, who is here for the first time. We have some visitors. I think I see some new faces out there. Just a reminder, this is very important. If we could please leave the very back row and just the back area for families with young kids. You see Jen trying to bring her stroller in. I'm sorry to totally uh, put you out there, Jen. But she's maneuvering her sleeping baby with a stroller in. Um, and so we need that area clear for those with infants and young children. Otherwise, if y'all could sit up, you 
you see so many, the entire front row over here is empty. All around PQ is empty, two rows. Um, and I am right here, but we have Hayne and Jeannie's family that like to sit right behind me. And this front row is open again. So please, 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 can we be a community that is uh, empathize with those with young kids, have compassion for them and help them out. I implore you to sit a little closer to your pastors. No, I'm kidding, just sit closer to the front. It will be really helpful for those who come late and for those with young kids. So welcome everyone. Some announcements. We've announced that we're doing a special Lenten prayer. We are in the season of Lent, began with Ash Wednesday. This is called Ascend the Hill. We are doing, there's early morning prayer anyway throughout the entire year, but this special time of three weeks. It begins next Monday, which is March 11. It'll be Monday through Friday, March 11, and then we will end on Good Friday, which is March 29. So three weeks, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., folks, in person, downstairs in the Potomac Room. 6 a.m., please join us for a special time of prayer during this um, Lenten season. Pastor Q and I will take turns leading an actual devotion. So the schedule is you come at 6 o'clock, you guys pray on your own. Own, and then at 6.30, after 30 minutes of y'all on your own praying, soaking, and do what you do, 6.30, PQ or I will actually lead like a 10, 15 minute devotion where we'll speak and it will be live streamed on Facebook. We have a closed, private, Facebook group. If you're not part of that group, please, uh, there's a whole application process where um, you click that you want to join. It will vet you. But it's not our public Facebook page. It's our closed Facebook group. We're going to live stream 6.30 to about 6.45. So you can catch us on your way to work or whatever. And then you can pray again from 6.45 to 7 and then um, go to work or go back home and take a nap, whatever. So again, that starts on Monday. If you have any questions about that, please ask Pastor Q or myself. We're in a new month and so our HOP hour of prayer will be highlighting the new missions partner for this month is my friend, my very good friend, Chaplain Sa. So he's not part of a church. He's not really a missionary. Well, he's a missionary to the armed forces. He's a chaplain to the army and he is ministering, you guys, to men and women in the army. Soldiers are U.S. service people. So very, very important ministry. Lots of challenges for these soldiers. So pray for him. He will join us via Zoom next Wednesday, um, March March 13, I believe, yes. Wednesday, March 13, 7.30, join us on Zoom, and we will get to hear an update, what's happening with him and his ministry as a chaplain for the Army. I believe he's a major now. He got promoted to major. All right, now we have a special announcement for exciting stuff that's coming up. Come on up. special announcement from our own Helen Ra and team. Uh, uh, hi, hi. Hi, Hope Church. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, this is going to be a little bit interactive in the beginning, um, and then you can pay attention and be moved, okay? <laughs> so, um, I want you all to clap, to clap with me to this beat. All right? It's time for PBS and all its craziness. It'll be so glorious. Join me for PBS. Sign up starts today. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so. Yes, VBS preparation has begun. Uh, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but VBS actually is not just one week out of the year. It actually starts several months before that. Um, last year, as VBS director, um, I learned very quickly after daily triple espresso uh, coffee shots, um, <laughs> several 3 a.m. bedtimes, 
um, and multiple crazy mom hysterics where my <laughs> children didn't know whether they should laugh with me or whether they needed to call for backup. Uh, I realized very quickly that this year I need help. VBS help, VBS help, not psychological help. So I've been in search of a BBS assist, assistant VBS director this year. Okay, very important for my sanity and for the livelihood of VBS. Um, so, but I have great, great news. I found someone a few weeks ago. Um, our family got the opportunity to go to Florida. And I met the most amazing character. Uh, she is super smart. She can, um, she has a great eye for color, which is very important in VBS. She can match any color. Um, she is great with kids. My kids could not stop looking at her. And um, lastly, and the best part, she can hold in hand eight things at one time yes so when um i asked her if she would be willing to be our assistant vbs director she was a bit nervous but she's like i'm not too sure i'd have to go all the way to maryland but when i told her our vbs mission does that work there you go our vbs mission which is Sorry, I'm shaking, I'm nervous. Um, to bring gospel to children in a concentrated, fun, and engaging environment, to give them the experience of community and faith, and to witness the faith growing in our youngest members, she was ecstatic. And then, when I told her the theme for this year, scuba! diving into friendship with God. She couldn't say no. So she has agreed to join Hope Church this year at VBS 2024. So she is actually here today. If you guys could put your hands together and welcome Octania. <laughs> Sam right here. Right here, so everyone can see you. Thank you, Octania, for joining us today. I'm so glad you can make it to Maryland. Would you like to say hello? She's a little nervous, but that's okay. First day jitters are perfectly normal. So we got a lot of stuff to do for VBS. So why don't you help me out here, Octania? I want you to hold some things here. Here's the director's manual, very important. Ooh, a bunch of crafts that we always do with all our VBS participants. And what is this? Uh, oh, these are the prizes that we get to give out whenever they memorize all the Bible verses. And, oh, we got some scissors. Very important for all the decorations that we're going to do. Can you hold this? <laughs> um... Yeah, um, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, yeah, let me take that. Um, let me take that. Um, hold on one second. Hope Church, Hope Church. I have some possibly good news. Just turns out I have an exciting new opportunity that just popped up. I am in search of a new assistant VBS director. <laughs> so, all jokes aside, I really do need a assistant VBS director this year. So if you were uh, moved by this performance here today, um, if you are ready to have some major fun, be silly with me, create the best VBS experience for our participants this year, VBS 2024, please, please, please come talk to me 
after service today, come directly and talk to me, okay? You can even text me if you're too shy or not sure. I will convince you that it'll be great, okay? And also, on top of that, we do need lots of other volunteers as well. We have many positions available. Any length of time, any type of service, um, just go to the website, hopemd.church, and register to volunteer. You can text me, you can call me, you can email me, just give me your name. I'll sign it up for you. So please, please, please register to, register to volunteer. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. Thank you to Helen and Elise. All right, so you, as you heard, the position is now open. She promises not to pop your head <laughs> if you apply for the position of assistant director to VBS. It is going to be fantastic. We're super excited. Last year was amazing, but we can only do it with your help. It is only possible or as good as the number of volunteers and with God just really giving us that strength and perseverance to do it. So highly recommend see Helen Ra or go to our website. It's also on our website linked in the announcements. There's a little um, Google Forms link, you click on that and then you can register. It's not up yet, but it will be. <laughs> Not up yet. All right, as I said, it's a new month. We're in March. And so um, our Sunday fellowship food for March, if you could put the screen up, please, is provided by Gateway Thailand, which happens to be Helen and Daniel Ra's house church. She's real busy this month, folks, real busy. So um, thank you to Gateway Thailand and the Sunday fellowship food that you are giving to us. All right, now it's time for our giving, our tithe, our offerings. You can use the Church Center app. We've got a um, offering plate up here. In whichever way, let's give unto the Lord. All right, let us pray for our offering. God, you are holy in this place and we love you. We delight in being in the house of prayer for everyone with family, friends to worship you. We lift this offering unto you, God. We ask that you would accept it, that we would be cheerful givers unto your ministry and your work and of the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. We ask God that you would grant us wisdom in how we steward the blessings that you have given to us. We pray for our missions partner for the month of March, for Chaplain S.I. Saul, as he ministers to the men and women in the U.S. Army, God. Father, your protection and grace over them, as well as his wife and three daughters. Father, that you are continuously watching over them, protecting them, and blessing them. We thank you. And we also pray for those who are hurting among us, those suffering from cancer, from illness, allergies, from even the common cold, from COVID. Father, we ask that you would draw near to those who are hurting physically, emotionally, financially, God, mentally. Father, you draw near to those who desperately need your presence in their lives. So Father, we delight in you. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, before Pastor Q comes up here, I'm asking all the Hope Kids to go downstairs so that you guys can have your Sunday school. God is good. Good to see you, Brendan. Good to see all of you. God is good. God is good. You don't sound convinced. God is good. All the time. Amen, amen, amen. Um, 
Let me begin with a simple question. When you pray, have you ever had a time when you feel like nobody is listening? As if when you pray, the, the, your prayers are bouncing up the wall. As if the, you know, the heaven is brass and you know, somehow nobody's listening. And yet you feel like, is this normal? Is this normal? Have you ever felt like that? I did many times. I do sometimes. Absolutely. Not only me, but a lot of Christians, a lot of uh, believers, uh, a lot of sons and daughters of God over the centuries struggled with this thing. In today's passage, we're going to look at in Luke chapter 18. It's all about God, all about prayer, all about our relationship with God. And this, in this parable, in this story, Jesus tells us about this, what to do with this, and how we are supposed to handle all this. When you begin to feel like that, it is, this is when we need to go and rely upon who God is, what God, what God has promised, what he said about prayer, and also about what he said about our relationship with him in prayer. This is when we need to walk by faith, not by feelings. This really helps me to, you know, do a little plug-in for Ascend the Hill, which will be beginning March 11th through 29th, as Pastor Mimi already made an announcement, mentioned this. Um, and I was, I was, you know, one of the, pray, one of the uh, verses I really love, promises I really love in the Bible is, uh, Psalms 5, chapter 5, verse 3 says, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will order my ways, order my prayers to you, and eagerly watch. In the morning, God says, it says, In the morning, you will hear my voice, hear my prayers. So for uh, three weeks, uh, from Monday to Friday, starting March 11th through 29th, through the Passion Week, ending on the Good Friday, which is uh, March 29th, and we will have Lenten prayer morning. We'll start, and we'll start at 6 in the morning, and by exactly by 7, p 7 a.m., not 7 p.m., 7 a.m., one hour. In the middle of it, in the middle of it, we have, have never done this, Pastor Mimi, and I will take turns giving the word for the day. You know, our prayer, morning, morning prayers has been you know, really uh, devotional, you know, uh, seeking our prayers. But we really didn't have any preaching, but we are going to do that. We're going to Facebook Live it at exactly 6.30. Those who cannot come and join, you can actually join us for that uh, 15 minutes or so. But uh, what I want to encourage you is take time. Maybe you can, can come once, once a week, twice a week, every day. You can come and join us. Let's seek God together. Let's seek God's face together. And make a special time to join. You may have a special prayer need. You may you are see, ask, seeking God's touch, God's breakthroughs in your life. This will be a great time to come and join us, a time of prayer. Okay. Let's all stand for the reading of the word. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. And I'm reading from ESP. You can follow along in your own Bible if you want. But you can also follow along on the screen in, in, in ESV version. And he, Jesus, told them a parable to the, to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in the city who kept coming to him and saying, give me just justice against my adversary for a while he refused but afterwards he said to himself though i neither fear god nor respect men yet because this widow keeps bothering me i will give her justice so that she will not beat me down wear me out by her continual coming 
verse 6. And, Je and the Lord Jesus said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said, says, And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over, over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them, justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Here is a reading of the Word of God. Let's be to God. You may be seated. But I just come before you right now. I pray right now, Father, more than a good message, more than a great teaching. We want to encounter you, we want to meet with you, that your word will become flesh among us. You will show yourself to us, we will meet with you, God. We want our hearts and lives to be aligned totally. We will see your face, God. I pray you grant us clarity with brevity, with your truth that transform our lives. We ask for your presence, we ask for your grace. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. A parable on prayer. This is what Jesus was giving, a parable on prayer. Parable is a simple story or illustration used to illustrate truth. This parable, as you read, it really is about, you know, and it was given so that Jesus says, so that they ought always pray and not give up praying. The point of the parable is keep on praying. Always be praying and do not give up. Do not be discouraged. Look at verse uh, 1. Jesus told them a parable to the effect for the purpose. He, this is one of those parables where, one of, one of the few parables where Jesus tells from the beginning what we want, he wants us to know. He tells the beginning, this is what this the story is about, it tells us, the story is so that, that they ought always to pray. You, you will not stop praying, you'll keep on praying and not lose heart. I, I like some of the way other translation translated it. NIV says, and not give up. King James Version, KJV King James Version says, and not faint. Holman Bible says, not become discouraged. They should not grow weary in Aramaic, translate the Bible. Or do not grow weary, discouraged, or quit, or faint. Let me ask, do you get discouraged when you pray? Do you give up praying? When have you done that? You know, and, and you think about this, when? If you think about it, you know, that's, that's, I was looking at the scriptures, I remember I can see Abram and Sarah getting discouraged. He was already 75 years old and she was 65 and God gave them a promise. Go to the land that I, I tell you to go and you go, I'll make you a great nation. I'll make you, and I'll, I'll do you all the famous of they'll be blessed. Okay, they, they go. And go, goes out in a 75 year old man, a 65 year old woman goes out there because God gave them a promise. You know, and, and, and so they waited 25 years for the, God's promise to be fulfilled. There's a point in time in the middle of after waiting about 10 years, God said, I'm going to give you a son, I'm going to give you a child. You know, I'm, I'm 85 now, and she's 75. Nothing is happening for 10 years. They waited 10 years. Nothing happened. And so, the, 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 wouldn't you be discouraged? Sarah got discouraged. She said, maybe God didn't mean through me because I can have a baby. Maybe I'll give my, you know, the maid servant. And maybe you can have a son through that. You can have a baby through him, her, so that baby will be mine, legally be my, my child. You know the stolen story, and she got discouraged. 25 years. We can get discouraged in praying because sometimes it seems like nothing is happening. And nothing, maybe not in the way that I want, not in the way I think. We can get, discouraged. We can get discouraged. 
Right? Do you get discouraged? I do. Now Jesus tells a story, a parable, to say not to be discouraged, not give up, but continue praying. He tells a story that, that there was a judge, but it was not a good judge, it's a godless judge. This judge didn't care about God, didn't care about what is right and wrong, he didn't care about anything, he didn't care what people think, he didn't care about people. It says, right? He said right here, a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And I be says this way, neither feared God nor cared what people thought. You cannot, he doesn't care what people think. He will do whatever he wants. You cannot pressure him or not. And he says in MSG version, tasty version, never gave God a thought and cared nothing for people. He didn't care about people. And passion translation is passionate one. Godless men who had no fear of others' opinions. There's a, this is a judge. So then, and, then, and then Jesus set up the story by saying that there was a widow. In those days, a widow had no power, no protection. The most uh, displaced, helpless person. It says there was a widow in the city who kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. She's not asking anything wrong. She says, I want justice. I want what is right against my adversary. She has adversary and widow in those days had no social standing. She had no power whatsoever. She is at the mercy of those around her to help, and she has no connection whatsoever. On top of that, this is a bad man. This is a evil judge, a no fear of God, no fear of God, no care for people. He doesn't care about anything. But there's one thing she had got going. She kept coming. Every, you know, is to look at verse four. For while he refused, he refused her, don't come. And said, so, I'm not gonna, and, and, so, and she would show up every day knocking. Hey, judge, go away next morning. Hey, judge, go away. And he goes, he go out to the market. Somebody, hey, judge, don't okay, don't, and stop following me. And she's coming every day. That's all she got. She came, kept coming, would not stop coming. Look what it says. Afterwards, he refused for a while. Afterwards, he said to himself, I don't, I, I fear, I, I neither fear God, nor respect men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, bothering me, I'll give her justice so that she will not beat me down, wear me out. She'll make me go crazy by her continual coming to me, right? Verse 6, Jesus says, look what this unrighteous judge said. What did he say? He said, I don't care about anything, but this woman is bugging the heck out of me. She is showing up in my dream. She's showing up everywhere. She's bothering me. She's wearing me out. Everywhere I see that woman coming and she's telling me. That's what this story is. And then Jesus says, look at next verse. And Lord Jesus said, hear what the unrighteous judge said. Remember what he said. And then Jesus says, will not God give justice? Not to the widow, to his elect, his chosen people who cry out to him day and night. Will he delay long over them? The answer is no. Will not God? You know, oh, some, some translators might say, how much more God? But you know, I need to stop here because we may get a wrong idea here. We may get a wrong idea as we are comparing God with this judge. That's not the point, right? Because the judge is, God is not this, like this judge at all. This judge is evil. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about people. But our God is caring. He is loving. He is gracious. We are not like the widow. 
who is helpless, defenseless. No, we are God's chosen people, his sons and daughters. Because of this, he, God, delights to hear our prayers. Quickly answer our prayers until he comes. Now, point here is not, you know, as you, listen, point here is remember who God is. God is just. He never does anything unjust. Okay, he never does anything unjust. If he does anything, he's always just. Let me stop right here. Now. We may have a wrong, what do you call, heretical Christian, ver Christian version of this story. Listen, listen, this is a heretical one, okay? Heretical Christian version of this story is if I pray hard enough, if I really come and pray many, many, many times, God has to listen to me. God must listen to me. That's not biblical. That's not Christian. That's heretical. You, you, you know, you know because, because you think, when you say that, we are thinking that either God don't care about me, or either God does not know what I'm doing, or God can be pressured into doing what he doesn't want to do. That's wrong, idolatrous thinking. God is not a genie. God is not a vending machine. Put enough coins, voila, pop, your answer come out. That's not God. That's not the point of the story. That's unbiblical. That's, you know, heretical. But many people think. If I pray hard enough, if I go and pray long enough, God will give me what I want. That's not the point here. Think about this, right? Do you keep repeating your requests? Number one, because the quality of prayer is dependent upon quantity of prayer. Secondly, do you keep asking because maybe God is ignorant of my situation? I need to let him know. How ridiculous that sounds, right? Or settled, or to be, or maybe God don't care. So that I need to help him to care for me. Number three, or are you repeating your prayers because God is unwilling to hear your prayers? That you have to really prevail against him to change his mind that he will want to answer my prayer. These are all wrong, right? Number four, or do you repeat prayers because if I show my zeal and if I piety how righteous, holy I am, God will change his mind. That I will stray his decision. That's all unbiblical. This is not what God is. Look at what Jesus said. Will God, look at God, look at God. Who is God? God who so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son to die on the cross to forgive us our sins so that he, we, may, we may have eternal life with God. Would he hold anything back from his sons and daughters? He paid the price for, would he? I remember there was a verse that, that, a verse that uh, uh, one of our friends, one of my friends used to remind me. In Psalm, I believe, in one of the Psalms, it says, those who look to him will be radiant. Their faces will never be ashamed. Those who look to God, those who look to who God is, will not be ashamed. Often when we are, in, in, when we are going to difficult time, difficult season, really, and praying and whatnot, when, I, when things look difficult, I'm so focused on what's happening right here. I'm looking down here. Oh, things are difficult. Those who look to him, lift up your head when you begin to look who God is, how he loves us, how he cares about us. We begin to rise above the clouds and see things differently. This is true that throughout centuries, many, many Christians struggle with the silence of God. Sometimes it feels that like God is silent. Sometimes it feels that like God is silent. And, and so, you know, and, and many, many have thought, and we, we thought about this, you know, and 
few, he, he'll hear me, my, my few thoughts on this thing. Sometimes silence means God lovingly says no. God lovingly saying no. Think about it, right? Think about this. Perhaps we're asking things, wrong things. Maybe I'm asking wrong things. It says in James chapter 4, verse 3, it says, you know, and it says, uh, James 4, 3, I don't have the verse here, so I'm, okay, do not worry about this one. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to, re- to spend it on your own possession. God is not a Santa Claus. God is not. God is not in the business of being, being your or, or my genie giving us everything we want. God is in the business of saving us from, forgiving us from our sins so that he'll give us eternal life. And then when we come to know him, that he is, he's, he's, his business is in making us sons and daughters of God, that we may become men and women of God. If you ask for wrong thing, a good father, would good father give the wrong thing to the child? Of course not. No good mom or dad will do this. If you ask the kid, if you give everything what your child wants, you are a bad parent. You are a horrible parent. If you are to ruin your child, you give them everything they want. When, you're, when your kid is second grade, what do they want? What do you want? I don't want to go to school today. Okay, don't go to school. I want to eat ice cream, but breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, you can do that. I want to play a game all day. Okay, you can do that. I don't want to sleep now. I want to sleep when I was asleep. I, okay, you can do that. That's a bad parent. We know this. How much more our Heavenly Father, when we are asking for wrong things, would he give us, give us what, is, what we want? He's committed to give us what is the best, what is good for us. Sometimes the silence may mean God loving be saying no. Amen? One of my favorite uh, Bible teachers, I listen to him every morning on the way to prayer, uh, J. Vernon McGee, he passed away about 20-some years ago. He still is on the radio, five, you know, the, through the Bible in five years program. I've been listening to him about three times already. That's 15 years. He said, I have learned over the years best answers God has given to some of my prayers was no. Let me say it again. I have learned over the years, best answer God, given, God has given to me to some of my prayers is no. Secondly, sometimes silence may mean, silence may mean that God has a bigger answer in store. Not the one I want, but something greater the better that he has laid for us. Isn't this what, uh, uh, isn't this what Apostle Paul experienced? He, he had thorns in the flesh. He was really hurting, and he prayed three times, the Bible said. Doesn't mean that three times. It means for three seasons of serious asking before God that he will remove the thorn from his side. And God instead said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And God said, I have something bigger answer plan for you, something bigger for you. When, when, and I, when Sarah tried to answer, you know, get, get her own answer, and, and of God's promise of giving a child to, through maid's uh, servant, God, God, that wasn't God's purpose. God's plan was to give her a son through her own body, that Ab- from Abraham and Sarah, from both of them, a child of promise to come. Third, the third, so sometimes silence may mean God is giving, helping you so that you may learn to depend on him. Learn to depend on him. Trust in him. And also it may mean that God is giving you a season where that he is maturing your faith. 
maturing your faith. Let me see if I can quote uh, um, something. Um, and this is what Matthew Henry, one of the first commentary, you know, well, first commentary said I bought in college in 19, I think 80, I bought this whole Bible commentary set for the $40, $50. And I, I think point size, the, the font point size six, it's tiny. You have to use a magnifying glass to read the thing. You know, in, in this one of the things it says is, sometimes God sees that we need physical sickness for the good of our souls, more than we need healing for the ease of our bodies. And then we must be willing for a season because there is a need to be in heaviness. But when God sees that the work is done and that we need healing, we shall have it. Sometimes silence may mean that he is maturing us. It may mean that you are teaching us to depend on him, not in our own strength. It may mean that he may be honing, he may be sharpening us. He is restoring something in us, some of these greater purpose and plan for our lives. One, finally, one more thing. I like this one. Uh, this is what uh, one, of my, uh, one of my favorite speakers lately, uh, um, Lon Solomon shared a message 30 years ago on this thing, and I, I like what he says. Sometimes he's answering but we don't have the sense to realize it. Sometimes silence may mean God is working, and, and, and I do, but yet I do not realize what I'm doing. Let me quote the things up there. Some prayers are followed by silence because they are wrong. Others because they are bigger than we can understand. It will be a wonderful moment for some of us when we stand before God and find that the prayers we clamored for, we really rattled for in early days and imagined were never answered, have been answered in the most amazing way. And that God's silence has been the sign of that answer. And often, sometimes, that God in silence, God, in, in, when we think it's silent, God is answering my prayers. He is working in amazing ways that I didn't know. And I just didn't realize that. And on my own understanding, I, I didn't understand what God was doing. But God may have been, have been answering. Let's go back to the text. Go back, go, go back to the passage saying, look at verse 8. Let me start with verse 7. Will not God, will not God, well, let me see if I go back to verse 7. Will not God give justice to the, his elect, his chosen people who cry to him day and night? The answer is, of course he will give justice. He will give justice. Will he delay long over them? No, he will not delay long. That's the point Jesus is getting at. Look at verse 8. It says, Jesus says, I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. He didn't say immediately. You need to look at the next, next verse, the next part of the verse to really understand what Jesus is saying. He says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Let me stop right here. Where did that come from? Where, where is this son of man coming come from? You know why? Because right before this, pa this passage, Jesus spoke in chapter 17 about coming of Jesus. Remember he talked about that? He talked about we need to be ready and prepared. And he's coming a little bit suddenly, quickly he'll come. And this is what, this is a, you know, in original Bible, you know, the Bible, there was no chapter divisions. There's one continuous story here. We, they divided in 17 and 18 for our own benefit. These stories are connected. Right before this talked about Jesus is coming, sometimes people get discouraged because God didn't just say, I'm gonna, you're coming quickly? We've been waiting so long. When are you coming? We've been waiting 2,000 years. When are you coming? 
We can give up praying. We can give up discouraged. Are, are you really coming? When things are really, really difficult, are you really coming? See, here Jesus said, I will tell you he will give justice to them speedily. He didn't mean immediately because, you know, in, 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 because in, you know, in, if you go down 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, it says, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand, like a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. When God, Jesus said, I'm coming quickly, he didn't mean I'm coming immediately. His, his point was, when he, when he comes, he'll come swiftly, he'll come quickly when he comes. He'll come suddenly, he'll come surely, but he'll come suddenly. He'll come in the time that is right, when it's perfect, he will, he will come in the right time, and when he comes, he'll be swift, quickly he'll come. Suddenly he will come. Amen? God, Jesus' point here is that, yes, God who loves you will always answer your prayers. He will always answer your prayers. He will not be slow to it. He is quick to it. He will answer because he is a loving God. He is kind God. He is gracious God. You don't need to, you don't need to beg like a widow. Then why do we need to pray? Persistently. He says, he says, when the Son of Man come, will he find faith on earth? Here, you, you see, he's just saying, what is the faith on earth where he's looking for? Those who are keeping waiting on him, asking. Not because God isn't here, but because we know God loves us, because God wants to give us, therefore we could keep, keep on asking. Not because we're begging, but because he's good, we are asking. That's a sign of faith, isn't it? Continued prayer is, next slide, evidence of faith. Continue praise, evidence of faith that I trust in what God said he will do. A lack of faith is, you know, the, uh, the, uh, evidence of lack of faith is, I'm not going to ask again because, you know, he, I don't think he will do it. Evidence of faith is continued prayer. Not only that, continued prayer helps to build our faith. Helps to build our faith. When you keep on asking, you know, and this is when our faith is growing and we will stand firm before God. So keep on asking. It's always too early to quit. As long as he is alive, as long as I, we are alive, it's too, always too early to quit asking. Early, too early to quit. And as I prepare the message, you know, there was a, you know, sometimes a song comes to me, and I've been singing. I've been singing this old hymn. I was singing two hymns. I'm going to only sing one, okay? And I will not kill your ears, okay? It is a very well-known hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I like the verse too. Heavy trials and, tem and temptations, is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged or oh, to not give up. Do not quit. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can he 
find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share jesus knows our every weakness take it to the lord in prayer it is always too early to quit it's always too early to quit why because our God cares, our God loves. He loves us, our prayers, even, even more than we are asking him. He knows and cares. He always answers our prayers. This is what Jesus is saying. He always answers our prayers. He always answers our prayers. Sometimes he may be lovingly saying no. Sometimes he may be saying, I'm going to give you a better thing. You might be saying, I, I, want you, I need to wait on my time. I'm doing something great in you. He always answers our prayers, Jesus says. Amen? That's the point of this parable, this story. One of the things, you know, I am, the many things I'm grateful for. One of the things I'm most grateful for is my wife giving me the one the most wonderful woman to be my wife. But one of the, one of the things I'm so grateful was that, you know, you know I, I told you about, I had about almost nine years ago, not quite 10 years ago, I had a stroke. I had a full-blown stroke. I'm so grateful that I had a stroke in front of people. I had a stroke in front of, while I was doing, pre, uh, I was wedding rehearsal. Colin was there, you know, actually playing. Is Colin here? He's playing guitar right here and then, and I am in the middle of the wedding rehearsal. I am, he saw me, I'm in a, in a, in a falling down. And like, he told me, Pastor, you don't, don't play around. What are you doing? He thought I was, I was in a playing and I was just, you know, and falling. And, and I'm so thankful. The bride was a nurse. One of the grooms was an EMT. They knew right away that I was having stroke. And, and, and I, they called the ambulance, they checked in the ambulance, you know, slur speech and all that. And they called the ambulance, our ambulance was there in 20 minutes. They took me to the hospital. Within 30 minutes I was in the hospital and, they, and, and, and my, my left side was gone. My, I couldn't move my hands, I couldn't, my feet was gone. And, and so, you know, and, and that, that was, I had a stroke, I had a full blown stroke. But I was early enough where, and when my wife came, they put out, you know, the medication they put in to unblock that blocked thing. And within 10 days of everything, I came out fully, no sign of whatsoever. But you know, one of the things I noticed, realized was that on that day, and you know, people heard about, you know, people heard about me having a stroke. Pastor Shin, one of our best friends, was in the NCFC doing a retreat, and he had everybody there praying for me. And people all over the world praying for me that day, and I was, and it came out healed. And, and I was, you know, it's, it's a, you know, I mean, it was an immediate answer, but God always answers our prayers. That's what Jesus is saying here. If this wicked judge, all, only thing, only thing, the reason he has helped that woman was because she, he bothered, she bothered him. But our God, so good, loving, he will give justice. He will. Amen. So keep on asking. Do not stop. It's always too early to quit. Let me stop right here. Let me have the uh, praise thing come up. Today is, uh, we have a communion today. It's our uh, first Sunday of the month. I, you know, and this is part of tradition. I carry it along because, and I grew up in a Catholic church where they had communion every Sunday. Every time they had a mass, they had a communion. I love that. But on the other hand, it was too much. So, you know, we, we, we will be more, some churches, they only do communion like three times a year. That's not enough. And so we, we do it once a month, remembering who God is, what he has done for all of us, his grace for us. He loves us. He loves us. 
I'm reminded how great he is. And as, as, we are, as you're worshiping, as uh, Elder Lama's praying, suddenly I remembered why we gather on Sundays to worship. And, 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 and we are coming to a place where, you know, we do, we meet house church on Friday nights and all that. I can, I can you know, listen to sermons on, online anytime I want. Do I really need to come on Sunday to worship? Part of, really, part of that really came from obeying the fourth commandment. Keep the Sabbath holy. One day you say, God said, that day you do not work. You stop everything from working. You stop, you rest. What do you do? You remember God. That's where that the Sunday worship, it came from. And you are know, taking time to remember this is a world God has created. We, we love God. He loves us. He says, remember me and you take time to stop from all things and refocus your hearts and minds and you rest, God. I, say, I would love you so much. I want you to rest. I want you to come before me and remember what God, I have done for you. You are in slavery. You are in slavery. I set you free. That's what the Sunday service is about. We're coming, taking a day set aside saying we are on, we are obeying God. So we are doing what God called us to do. Yes, we can, have our, we can have churches every other time, but we do set aside a day. We say this is a day of worship. We give unto God. Today we celebrate a communion, remembering what God has done for us, how much he loves us, how he shed his blood for us, how far he went to save us, how far he went to restore us, how far he is committed to us that we may have a loving relationship with him. We will have life with him for forever. Amen? Let me, let's pray. Father, we love you. We, are, we love you for your grace. We are yours, O oh God. But Father, we thank you that you are God who, God of justice, God who loves us, God is gracious to us. He hear our prayers. He always answer our cries and the best you give us of what is the best for us we do love you we look to you god we come today remembering your mercy and your grace your love manifest on the cross when you shed your blood lord jesus gave your life for us and forgiving us our sins giving us new life and making us your sons and daughters keeping us a life eternal promise with you god we give you glory we give you thanks we love you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
You may all be seated. As you know, we're in the season of Lent right now. Um, at the end of this month, we will be journeying through Holy Week, the Passion of the Christ. We are reminded that it does not end uh, in darkness, but we will celebrate on the last day of this month, Easter, Resurrection Sunday, the glorious resurrection. And so we celebrate communion today and we remember, we do this in remembrance. So as we know, the night of Jesus Christ's arrest, he was sharing the Last Supper or Passover meal with his closest friends. He took the bread that was on the table and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples around the table saying, take, eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he also took the cup that had the wine, in this case juice. And he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for all of you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do it in remembrance of me. And that is why every time we celebrate and come to the table and we eat this bread and we drink this from this cup together, we're proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Let's pray. God, we are grateful, grateful children of God whom you favor, the people of God. These are great gifts that you have given to us. You have commanded us to come, to eat of this bread, and to drink of this juice, this wine, God, and do it in remembrance of you. We remember what you have done. We remember what you continue to do and what you will do in the future when you come again. So we are grateful. We thank you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All are welcome to this table, those who have been baptized or those who trust in the Lord and by faith can come to the table. So please, there's two lines here. You may come and take and then take it back to your seat and then we will uh, eat and drink together. Please feel free to come.
And let's all stand. And we'll receive the benediction from Pastor Q. Pastor Mimi was rushing me. I didn't finish my communion. I didn't get my wafers open quickly enough. Let's sing the chorus together. You're a good, good father. Who you are. Who you are. Who you are. And I'm loved by you. Who I am. If you need any prayers, if you need any, uh, you're need, in need of any prayers, if, you, if God is touching you and, and really moving in you, even right now, we want to invite you to come. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with uh, you, with the pastors that pray with you. After the benediction, come and join us. Father, we love you, we honor you, we give you glory for your grace. We thank you. Indeed, you are good, good Father. God who loves us, God who watches over us. God who walks with us, talks with us. God who speaks to us of your love. We thank you that you are indeed God who hears our prayers. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God the Father. And the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit can be upon all those who have gathered here, be upon all those who look to Him, who has given all things for us. Be upon Hope Church from now until forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.